Over FNAF's nearly eight years of existence, we have seen plenty of theories. Some of them accurate, some of them not so accurate. However, at least we tried, right? But what about the people who don't? Who just make stuff for the sake of views or to mess with people, or just to have fun? Those fake FNAF theories are what we're exploring today. Let's do it. In a 10666 custom night. In the good old days where all we figured was that we were a criminal stuck in purgatory, we thought that all of the secrets of FNAF could be unlocked using the game's custom night, where you'd set the characters to specific levels and see if you could make it through. However, one such suggestion, the 666 suggestion, was not in fact the case. By setting the latter three animatronics to level 6, it was rumored that the kitchen camera would be unlocked, and you'd have audio as well as visual this time around. But that turned out to simply just not be the case, because, well, if you look at the game files, there is no visual for the kitchen cam, meaning that no matter what, unless you added a version of it yourself, there would be no way to unlock that camera. And this wasn't the only time we'd end up getting trolled by FNAF 1's custom night, but more on that on a whole kerfuffle later on. <laughs> Fun fact, kerfuffle was what I named my first Club Penguin Puffle. And at 9, Fazland. Way back in the day, a fake Twitter Scott Cawthon ended up releasing images about a new Fazland amusement park that was supposedly in the works around the time that FNAF 3 was coming out or being announced or it was supposed to be the location of FNAF 3, one of those. However, this was obviously a hoax and we never ended up getting a Fazbear Entertainment amusement park in real life or in a game, which looking at the events of Security Breach, it's probably a good thing, in all honesty. I think that this whole Fazland thing might have also been the inspiration behind the abandoned fan game Sinister Turmoil, or at least indirect inspiration, since that game was planned on taking place in a Fazbear themed amusement park as far as I can tell from the trailer. And I mean, we've also made videos about the subject, with our series about a real pizzeria, and then like the top 10 attractions we'd want to see at the FNAF amusement park. Those, those were fun. That one was Amanda's idea, actually. But either way, it's certainly something that was believable then, and honestly, still believable now. But if it gets announced again, I'm gonna be taking it with a grain of salt. In it ate Chrome Freddy. A YouTuber named Jimbathy posted a video called FNAF 3 Chrome Freddy Animatronic Easter Egg, Secret Five Nights at Freddy 3's Easter Egg. That's a great title. The YouTuber found a mysterious animatronic called Chrome Freddy. The color of the animatronic is silver, gold, copper with a, like a darkish green, lime green, just green. And it has black eyes with white glowing pupils. Sure, it does look real, but there was three things that made this Chrome Freddy fake. Number one. There was no light. Number two, it had no shadow. And, and three, it's endoskeleton. The endoskeleton had no black like tube pipes on it. And it was really the original Freddy Fazbear model from FNAF 1. And it had no endoskeleton jaw in its mouth, while Chrome Freddy did have one, okay? Chrome Freddy was 100% fake. <laughs> No character exists in the game files for FNAF 3, and the video was just posted as a joke. Jimbathy made the video because he thought it was funny, not because he thought it was real or something like that. It's it's like the same thing when way back in college, I claimed that I had a copy of Elder Scrolls 6 and made a fake game cover and to, to make a joke video and stuff, okay? It was just for fun, okay? And so is this Chrome Freddy video. I doubt he figured it would blow up as much as it did and that people would think that it's real. It seemed very sarcastic when I was watching it though. And it's 7 2023 location. In our series of videos about how a real FNAF location could happen, it was capstoned with the video about the secret plan for a FNAF location. Secret plan. <laughs> Where I proposed that perhaps in 2023 we'd end up getting a real actual like FNAF pizzeria. This was solely based on the idea that FNAF 3 takes place in 2023. Or at least currently, that's what I still believe until we end up getting proof that it doesn't. However, it's time I come clean. That video was just an idea. It, it wasn't a theory. There is no actual evidence behind it. I merely suggested it because I'm a pathological liar and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. But, but, but really, it, it wasn't really a theory or something. Like, it's not something that I thought was going to happen, but it was certainly at least technically possible. I seriously still think that a pizzeria that would end up being creepy after like 9 p.m., like if like for, like for adults after 9, would be incredibly cool and would make absolute bank. Like I might have to do that with, with non-FNAF characters just because that's an awesome idea. And at 6, Tater the Waiter Gator. Tater the Waiter Gator was a fan-made character that was made just for fun. However, the fake Scott that also did the whole fake Fazland thing took the model to Twitter claiming that they were a new animatronic. This guy was a real menace back in the day, holy damn. And while it was indeed a joke, the appearance of an alligator face in the FNAF 3 Happiest Day minigame made people reconsider the canonicity of Tater the Waiter Gator. 
I love saying that. I love saying that. It's so good. Uh, take it to the way to gate it. Okay, but the thing is, he isn't and was never canon. And the alligator character got explained away with Montgomery Gator, who luckily is not a waiter. He's a he's a golfer and apparently an assassin. We better get to solve the whole Monty killed Bonnie thing in the in the FNAF DLC or so help me, I'm actually going to cry. Okay, I won't cry, but like I'll definitely be disappointed in the quality of FNAF DLCs that we get if this isn't a thing. There's a multiplayer mode mod, right? So you might as well add it officially so it isn't absolute garbage, in my opinion, right? Right? Halfway through into number five, Mrs. Afton Death. The story of Mrs. Afton is, if there even is one, is a mystery that we've been debating for ages. A story that hasn't had a slight amount of explanation, okay? No references, no mention of an actual name, nothing. So naturally, there are theories about it. However, these theories have no actual base in-game lore, and instead, focus on a FNAF fan-animated music video and stories that are treated as canon, and sometimes heavily so, to the point where I've gotten plenty of people getting mad at me in my Instagram DMs. The truth is, we have no idea what happened to Mrs. Afton, currently. Uh, we don't even know if there really was a Mrs. Afton, or if it was just like a baby mama, or if William ended up having a surrogate so that he could have children on his own. Like, hell, his kids may just be adopted, like Courtney and Jackson from The Tempest by Julie Cross, which is actually my favorite book, and you should read it. Except FNAF is without the whole time travel thing. In the games, in the books, there's time travel now. But either way, for some reason, I don't know why, but like, I don't know what video caused this to pick up, but a lot of people think that Mrs. Afton died in a car accident. I mean, it's certainly a possibility, but that doesn't mean that, it, that it's canon. There are also others that think that William killed her, or that she just left him because she found out what he was into, but then for some reason left his prime demographic with him. Others think that she offed herself, others think that her leaving is the reason he started killing, and others think that she just died in a plane crash. All are equally possible, but nothing is actually canon. In it for Real Pizzeria. Before the release of FNAF 4, Scott Cawthon's website was littered with references to the numbers 8 and 7 in the source code. This caused many fans and even dear old MatPat to think that these were references to the year 1987, where the famous frontal lobe bite occurred, and even caused a whole lot of problems when the game was released. However, other fans believed these were coordinates, so after plugging them into Google Maps somehow, which I honestly don't understand how you would have done that, but like, Whatever. I just I tried to put the numbers in and it just didn't work, so I don't know how how they got to this, okay? But after putting them into Google Maps, they found the location that it was giving them, and it was an actual real-world pizzeria. Obviously, once this got shared, fans of the franchise started harassing the place trying to get answers. And while it was all one big coincidence, someone might have caught on before. Kathy Blockus reviewed the pizzeria, saying the robots kill people. I saw a robot fox killing a kid in there before. Run for your lives out there. This was three weeks before FNAF 4 was actually like announced, which is when all the 8s and 7s appeared on the website. So while this is incriminating for the pizzeria, um, Kathy also left five stars on her review. So either they're into some really weird stuff or they're just a fan of the franchise. Hopefully they're a fan. Getting close to the end to number three, Sparky the dog. In the early days of the game's lifespan, someone began to spread rumors about a hidden sixth animatronic named Sparky the Dog. Sure enough, screenshots began to pop up on Tumblr, because you know Tumblr is the most trustworthy. Reportedly, Sparky the one-armed dog was non-violent and would never attack the player, only appearing occasionally in the backstage doorway. However, it was eventually revealed as a hoax by the creators, Tumblr users Kodai Bear and Gwen, with all the screenshots obviously being photoshopped. Did you ever actually, like, think that Sparky was real? I didn't even know that this was a thing at the time. At this point, my knowledge of FNAF was limited to what MatPat said, because I was terrified of anything horror-related. Like, even, like, the Eddie Brock becoming Venom scene in Spider-Man 3 was terrifying to little me. To be fair, my parents also wouldn't let me watch anything remotely scary, and as a kid, I had a dream that uh, a zombie popped his face up right next to the, my bed while I was sleeping and then I ended up punching my side table. But yeah, I didn't, I don't remember this. <laughs> but it was a thing, it was a thing. But ultimately, in a number two, 1987 ending. 
I feel terrible for the poor sucker who figured this one out first. All right. At the end of every FNAF game, there's a bonus night that gives you more lore clues and more scares. But after beating it, you unlock a seventh night where you can customize the animatronics and give them specific levels to see how hard you can make it through. Like I was explaining with the 666 rumor. However, if you were to do this in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, you'd obviously be looking for more clues, trying to figure out what the hell is going on in the first place, which would later become an incredible series of games that were just even more confusing. But if you tried to solve this by being a little bit sneaky and inputting the animatronic levels to be 1987, the year of the infamous bite of 87, you end up getting instantly jump scared by Golden Freddy, which while hilarious is still creepy and unexpected, especially since everyone was saying that Scott intended this to be how he found out. So people were putting it in. So Scott updated the game to make it jump scare you with Golden Freddy. <laughs> I get that Scott wanted to shut the rumors down and stuff, but like why couldn't it just have been a normal night? What if someone wanted to use those levels for no reason other than to see if they could actually make it and then boom, they get spooked by Golden Freddy. It's kind of rude, but also that that's probably one of the, the scariest jump scares if you don't expect it. Because like, I don't know, why wouldn't the game just actually load like every other level setting? And finally, in a number one, the purple guy animatronic. The purple guy animatronic legend is an urban legend revolving around the 2014 Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Yeah, that's right, because they both came out in 2014. In early 2015, though, a YouTube video surfaced that reportedly showed a hidden animatronic reported to be the purple guy, the main antagonist of the franchise, who would later come to be, to be known as William Afton. The appearance of the purple animatronic was preceded by phone ringing, and then after the phone rang, the purple animatronic briefly flashed on screen, slumped against the wall of the office in a manner similar to Golden Freddy. However, it was soon revealed that the animatronic was simply a photoshopped image of Golden Freddy with a purple color scheme, and then Toy Chica's head. And I think that it's pretty obvious that it was photoshopped. Like, I mean, we've used the image in a couple thumbnails, and, like, every now and again, but no character actually ever like showed up in the game. If there was a purple guy animatronic, it wouldn't be reused assets either. Like, come on, people. I know it was 2015 and a 2014 game, but still, come on. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been Shower Man Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.